Hi everyone, welcome back to Pine Hollow Auto Diagnostics. Today we have a classic Japanese vehicle in the shop, a 1995 Acura Legend V6. Drove here from New York City, originally the car's from Florida. And the customer complaint is, the air conditioning doesn't work. So it's getting hot out in the city, you need AC. So let's try to figure this one out. 1995 we can't plug in a scanner so this is going to be manual checks wiring diagrams so might get lucky um, and it won't take too long or we might get in the weeds this thing is a little fancy it has some modules so let's get into it first let's do a quick visual inspection under the hood so the AC compressor is down there you can see the clutch and we have two fans, and you might ask, why are they spinning right now? Well, because it has a fan timer module to cool it off for like five minutes after shutdown. Well, let's get in here, start it up, and see if the AC engages. Alright, so the fan's on. Push the AC button. Nothing happens. However, when the customer just got here 10 minutes ago, I was messing around with it and the AC did come on. The compressor kicked on, the fans kicked on, and it started blowing cool, but not cold. And then, you know, it worked and the customer was like, hey, it hasn't worked in a couple of weeks, or he was driving here, it didn't work, and all of a sudden it engaged, so it's intermittent, or most of the time it's broken. Then, while the compressor was engaged, I reached down here and unplugged this high pressure sensor, which is new, that has been replaced by you know, another shop. And the compressor kicked off. Then I plugged it back in, and the compressor never re-engaged. So, that's interesting. What we can do is, we'll make sure this thing is fully charged, we can do that. But, let's look at a wiring diagram at the controls for the AC system to see if we can bypass this switch and make the system come on. Okay, so I printed off the wiring diagram for the AC controls. This is the manual system, but still, it's, uh, it's a bit complicated. It's all computerized, and um, let's just follow, follow the, uh, the wires to the AC compressor clutch. So, there's a relay. What controls that relay? This is a power feed coming from a fuse to the control side of the relay and it's ground side switched by the PCM. So the PCM is in charge and it was sure would be nice to have scan data to see that command but we do not so we have to follow wires and logic just from wiring diagram. So there's two other wires coming to the PCM that you know relate to the AC system. They both go to this fan control unit, but where is the command? Like when you push the button, what sees the command? Here's the AC switch, dual switch. There's a little light right here, so the button does light up. That's this part. And then this part right here, it just goes to this fan control amp. Now is this pull down or pull up? Well, this is a power feed, so when you push the button, the little diode lights up, so this must be a ground. This, whole, this leg is a ground. So when you push this switch, it should ground this blue and red wire, which goes to our AC triple pressure switch. It's a four pin switch. And, well, if the switch is, you know, if the pressure isn't too high or too low, it should ground out this light blue wire, which goes here, to our fan control unit. So it looks like this fan control unit, you know, sending out a voltage this way, if it sees a ground, it'll turn on the fans, it'll click on these relays, turn on the fans, and to the PCM, it might ground this wire, this red and blue, which again goes to our triple pressure switch. This is the default state for this part of the switch, so that has to be grounded, it looks like. 
you know, if this whole leg is grounded, then there's a third wire. Maybe this is the control wire. We don't exactly know. Uh, we could look it up in service info, but I think a great place to start is the AC triple pressure switch. We can see if there's voltage on this light blue wire, see if it's grounded through this blue and red. When you push the button, okay, make sure that circuit's good, and then check this circuit right here. Because when I unplugged it, the AC kicked off and it never came on again. All right, first check. I got the pressure switch unplugged. We're going after the light blue wire and the blue and red, which is this uh, this part of the switch. Light blue, blue and red. So, what do we expect? We, see, we expect to see battery voltage on the light blue wire looking for a ground with the key on at all times. Sure enough, we do. 11.6 volts. That's great. Now, the other wire, blue and red, that should be grounded when we push the AC button. Alright, so what we can do, maybe a little test light from battery positive, hook it up to that, and see if that lights up with when you push the button. Alright, so these are my extension leads. The yellow is going to the light blue and the black is going to the blue and red. So the black lead right here, I have it going from battery positive through the test light to that pin and that pin should be grounded through a little resistor right, you know, through the control panel. The switch is on, the key is on, uh, we could measure the voltage on here on that you know is that button dropping our voltage at all 12.3 volts let's press the button twelve point three volts so the button isn't doing anything right now that's the preliminary finding let's uh Let's put the voltmeter in the window and the test light so we can see it and mess with the button and see if we can get this light to come on. Alright, so I got my meter and the test light right there in the window. The button isn't doing anything at all. Okay, so if that's the case, let's plug in everything and be the button. I'm just gonna probe this blue and red wire and we'll ground it. We could ground it through a test light or measure the voltage on there and then if we ground it and everything comes on then all we're dealing with is a bad button on the dash. Alright so triple switch is plugged in. I have the piercing probe right here on the blue and red wire with an extension going to the input of the meter and then this is a ground so let's turn the key on and let's see if that's battery voltage it should be if the switch is continuous and the pressure is happy okay 11.4 volts and press the AC button that should be grounded it's not so let's be the AC button and just ground it out like this there you go. Fans come on. AC clutch just kicked on. Let's run the car. Make sure the AC works. I, if I turn the fan off, obviously, you see that turns off if you turn the fan off. But let's see if it cools. Um, the vents, the airflow in here isn't the greatest. This one is okay. Let's see if it cools down. Um, we can put a set of gauges on it, see if it's full of refrigerant. But it looks like just a bad switch on the panel. Alright, so just to uh, start from scratch here, in terms of um, the whole system, I want to evacuate and measure how much Freon is in the system and then charge it to the appropriate amount 
It says uh, maximum 0 0.75 kilograms, which is 26.5 ounces. You guys can see that with the, without the glare right there. So let's do recover. And it'll show us exactly how much refrigerant is in the system right now. Okay, so we recovered 1.2 pounds, and the capacity is 1.6 pounds. Now, the recovery here isn't ideal. You lose a little bit. So it was mostly charged, um, but let's, uh, let's charge it. And we'll do in kilograms, since it's Asian. Was it 0 0.75? Okay, and we'll do both next and start. All right, it says press start to equalize hoses, disconnect low pressure hose, and start AC. Disconnect high pressure hose and connect low pressure hose. Okay, disconnect this guy. And we still have our bypass connected, so the compressor should kick right on. And we'll see how cold it gets. Okay, it's Turn the fan up. Let's look at the high side pressure. Okay, about a little over 200. That's normal for a, I'm oh, sorry, this is the low. The high side's disconnected, so the low pressure is about 30. Yep, that's normal. Click OK. It's going to purge the high side hose into the low side. Disconnect low, low hose. I'm going to make sure this pipe is cold. It's nice and cold. And click OK. Now it clears now. Alright, so control panel. This is the original unit. And the problem with this one was that the fan control didn't work. So that, that's the fan knob. And you can see that goes to this board. And this board has some problems. These traces are, look like they're gone. Corroded or, I don't know what happened here. Um, but the button for the AC is right there. And that pushes on, this, this is the AC switch. Okay, however, that also goes to this fan board. So, so, <laughs> uh, you know, we, we don't have internal diagrams here. We just have pin 21, blue and red, comes into this connector, and that has to be grounded for the AC compressor to kick on. And if this board's not happy, because obviously this one's not happy, and the one in the car might have the same issue, it looks like these capacitors might have leaked out or something. It went right through the board and that's where all the damage is. Unclear. But I don't know if we can make two or one good assembly here out of two bad ones. Alright, so we have the dash torn apart and it located pin 21, which is the blue and red wire. That's If you ground that, the compressor sh should kick on. And we're measuring 11.6 volts on that. So, if we ground it, just do the bypass test again. I'm assuming, yep, the fans kick on, compressor kicked on. So the problem is obviously in this control unit. So we can pop this one apart, try to trace the wires from the button to pin 21 here. I don't know, we might have to go on eBay again and try to find a good one, because all these units are 30 years old, and the electronics are just 
aging and degrading and some function, you know, sometimes the fan doesn't work, sometimes the AC button doesn't work apparently. So it's kind of a losing battle, but um, there's only one way to find out. Let's pop that cover off and see what this board looks like. All right, as expected, the uh, eBay control board is also might be even worse shape, but the fan works. So what are we going to do? We can just tap into pin 21 from the car harness side and put it to a ground switch, and that's it. I think that's that's all we can do to get this compressor to kick on. And it will be like OEM. So when this when that bypass switch is on, it'll be like pushing the button. It'll be a request. It won't be a hardwired input to the compressor. So it's not like it's going to overrun the compressor. So that's the only thing we can do until the owner finds a good replacement HVAC control unit, which is probably impossible. So um, this will get them by for a while, uh, at least through the summer. Hopefully the AC works, you know, and cools with a bypass switch. All right, so we're doing some component level testing here. I traced the wires going to the little AC push button, and on both boards, the button is obviously fine. So if, you, if I unclick the button, you know, infinite. If I push the button, zero ohms. So this is the original unit from the car where the fan controller didn't work. This is the eBay unit where the AC button doesn't work. Um, but it's this, you know, the circuitry in here is the problem. This is the problem. Um, so the only option here is to do an external bypass to ground through a, a switch, a to little toggle switch, and um, you know at least the customer can manually turn his AC compressor on. But if you turn the fan off, the AC compressor will stay running. So he'll just have to keep that in mind. Um, that's the way we're gonna go. All right. So with this control panel. We're going to install a bypass wire. Like, we'll come out here, we'll just put a little toggle switch to ground. So if this switch doesn't work, and right now it actually works after fiddling with the board, so it's intermittent. Um, but we'll install that. Let's just solder the wire to here. We'll wrap it up in some tape. And call this car at least diagnosed and bypassed. We'll do the, the Russian bypass on here. TS100 soldering iron. Of course, heat up the joint. Make sure the solder wicks in. Let it cool off. Do the other side. Beautiful. Tuck test. It's awesome. So let's install a little switch. Alright, so the bypass switch is installed right here with a zip tie on this old school telephone holder. So turn the key on. So the AC button. Right now it works, but if that fails, the backup switch does the exact same thing, just grounds out the control wire, and you'll have nice cold air. So we'll start it up. Should get nice and cool. But that's it, keeping the old cars on the road. You gotta do your best with uh, components that are failing just due to age. Usually, you can create some kind of bypass. So, I think the owner will be pleased if he can drive back to the city with nice, cool air coming out of his dash. Um, that's pretty neat. So, thanks all for watching. We'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.